Welcome to this Match 3DX video tutorial. Today we want to introduce the Match status file and how you can set up the Match status file for Match 3DX and of course the same way also for Match T. You can find also the information in the reference manual of Match 3DX and Match T and you can scroll down here and navigate to the chapter 7.5 at the moment called parameter override match status and here we see the steps that we need to perform we will create a text file in our project folder and then we will rename this text file called match.status this empty text file will then get a text content and this text content will be minus create option file we will then in my case i have an empty match 3dx project i will create a standard project and start processing this project but because this match status file is uh, saved in my project folder the first time it will not process but it will overwrite this match status file and enter all possible match status options that are available for this current version. So let's do these steps. We will then here for this data set that I have uh, at my D drive training data admin. We can go here into this folder. Here we are and we will here create a new text file. I will then call this text file match.status. So match, and then instead of the extension stat, uh, txt, I call it status. If you have Windows uh, file or, or, uh, or file or folder views hiding the extension, then please activate this so that you can change that. And then we will edit this file. I will here enter this minus create option file. Let me just double check. Minus create option file is the entry. That's it. And then I save this file. And now we have all that we need. So we go to our project. And we can enter now match T or match 3DX. I will do the whole video here with match 3DX. And then I will just create here a default project. Um, this is just to show how this match status file can be filled with entries. Of course, it would make sense that you set up the correct project type for or DTM file. I will just add here, create here demo one i will use the default settings also for my output i will here just create for this part demo match status i will call it and that's it that's my default settings normally i would now perhaps change my strategy and everything else this is not important because when I will now start the processing of this um, area, then let's go here back. We see now at the moment this match status file has one kilobyte and inside is this minus creation uh, create option file entry. When I now hit the process, let's do this, then the match T detects this match status file it also here writes in that it's now creating this option file and this is now successful and it's already done of course now if you would again activate this and rerun it again then you would really process this data but for the first time when it's only this entry then we fill in this match status with the current status options and let's open this one here now and now we can see all match status options that are in some case they are available also on the user interface 
but most of them are not. Mainly because this is an ongoing process that changes all the time. So we are taking some of these parameters out again with the next version because they were not so useful or we did some test runs or we did here for a better user and we offered him a parameter or a better user asked for an option and we introduced this into a version. But we don't want to put this onto the user interface first to not overload the user interface with many, many functions. And secondly, also we are testing some parts and then perhaps they will not give the result that we expected for. Most of the parameters have a short information text, what they are doing, but there is no documentation for it. And the main goal is really more in the opposite way. The customer demands for something and says, look, can we run Match3DX or Match-T with a parameter that helps us for this or that? And then we would then provide uh, the information which parameters to activate and they could help perhaps. Activation of a parameter is very simple. Each parameter starts with two dashes. And if you want to activate a parameter, let's say for example, the color, then I remove one of the two, like this here. And now this parameter becomes active. And when I activate it, then I can also, most of the times I can also enter a value or I can also change the parameter itself. Behind is typically the default setting. So if you activate a parameter, typically this will be similar like the default one. Um, but in our case here, we can see we could make the color band matching only on the red channel, on the green channel, on the blue channel or on the intensity channel. And then in our case, this will now run on the green channel. By default, if this is not active, then in our training, we would tell you that this is a mixed channel that we work from red, green and blue together. Uh, but here you could then emphasize a specific color band. Some parameters ask for a file. Um, for example, here we can output the automatic 3D area borderline in the Winput file format. And then you would here at first activate the parameter and then you would need here to enter the full path yeah? for example c and then whatever it is c temp name dot vnp and then again with two hashes and then this output would then write the automatic area borderline into this input file onto this file location. Of course, you need to have an existing file location to run. Very important, absolute path to enter when there's a file entry asked for. Some entries are also deactivating standard settings. For example, we can also deactivate the capacity check and for Match3DX, when you know that you have enough disk space, we can deactivate the disk space check. And therefore, again, you would just remove one of the dashes. Finally, you could also remove all other entries and just leave the one that you want to use. So in my case here, if I want to do this no capacity check in, I could remove everything else from this match status file and then just leave the match status file with this one single entry and then save this match status. I could have also saved it without deleting everything else. But then when I save this, then only this one parameter will then be checked and will be taken into consideration. And when we now start the processing in Match3DX for this project, let's just do this here and start the process then uh, the disk check will not be taken off. So we see here there's an advanced input and it says disk space check process is off. And you would also see it in your match 
log file. So therefore we can also take a look into this and we would then see here in our log file, which is in the output folder. And here when we look inside, we see at the beginning that the check was here not taken into account. Here we go, parameter file, and we see here disk space check process is off. So you can always see which parameters have been activated additionally from the match status file. So we hope this helps you to work with the match status file. Of course, you could also then just make a copy from this um, match status file to a different project. And as long as the version number doesn't change from match3dx or match-t, then the status file will also work for the other one. If we update our versions from the engine, then perhaps you have to check if this parameter still exists or not. And then you could, in this case, then still continue with the next version with it, or this parameter was not perhaps successful for our uh, engineering and support or also for the client and so we removed it. So thank you very much for watching this and have a nice day. Goodbye.